special guest here for you. Time to spotlight BWLPG. Rang the opening bell this morning. Listing here at the New York Stock Exchange. This is a dual listing, also listed in Norway. Joining me right now is CEO Christian Sorensen, CEO of BWLPG. Thank you for being here. Thanks we for saw me. your great video and the team there ringing the bell. Um, you have a dual listing, certainly great exposure here um, at the New York Stock Exchange. Why now? Why the dual listing? For us, uh, we've been listed on the Oslo Stock Exchange for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as we could see that our market cap reached a certain level, we're close to $2 billion now. We have increased interest from U.S. investors over the last, I would say, two years, three years. Uh, but they wanted to, they kind of encouraged us to, to also list here in, in New York. Right. So they can get, um, invest, we can become more investable for a broader U.S. investor base than what you do if you're just listed in Oslo. Yeah, I mean, you're in good company. There's certainly a lot of shipping companies here at the New York Stock Exchange. And if you have money on the sidelines or people who would like to invest in the company and they want to have a little more clarity or have it closer to home, it makes it easier for them. What kind of demand are you seeing? I mean, I, I understand you have the very large gas carriers, uh, maybe 490 vessels, something like that. You tell me about the current environment. Yeah, so we are part of a group which has just 490 vessels, but we have 44 VLGCs, as they call in our industry. Yeah. And, um, and we are the largest operator of very large gas carriers in the world. Um, and we, um, um, our market has um, for many years now been fueled by the increased exports of LPG here from the States. Um, and it's, um, it's very much, um, uh, it's a great investment story to tell on the back of that because mm -hmm. the, the, the exports here from the US, they look to increase you know, in the foreseeable future. We don't see any abating curve or anything, which is good for shipping. Yeah, and uh, we do have um, also limited number of new buildings in our uh, in our sector, which are being delivered from second half this year mm -hmm. and into uh, late 2025. So the dividend yield story that we are we are representing in our sector is is quite quite good. I would say we I mean we we paid out 98 percent of our earnings last year, uh, analyzed dividend yield of 28 percent. Uh, which is uh, which is quite good. So uh, yeah, where where is most of the uh, product sent out to? Where are you seeing? Is the, has the demand picture changed? You're talking about exports from the United States out. Um, what used to be the biggest players, and where are we sending most of it now? Yeah. So eighty percent of the volumes end up in Asia. Right. Uh, so you have this great dislocation between production and the demand side, which is good for shipping. So long distances going from the U.S. to the Far East. Yeah. And last year we even had a disruption in the Panama Canal, uh, sure. which, which was um, quite dramatic. So uh, we had ships sent around South Africa instead of the milk run via Panama, which absorbed 50, 40 to 50 percent more capacity from the fleet. And the rates spiked on the back of that. So there is this... Um, uh, wild card in our market, which is the Panama Canal. And so when you think about the competitive landscape, I mean, you're still able to function, you're growing, you see the demand and paying out the dividend. Um, what is the competitive landscape like for you? I mean, is there pressure on you because you talk about how you have to do rerouting, you talk about geopolitical issues. Um, what has that been like for you trying to run a company in this environment? Well, it's it's been quite volatile, I would say, but yeah. but the, um, uh, the we have a fairly large fleet of vessels, right? The largest in the in the world, and um, the way we we operate this uh, makes us also uh, reduce the I would say operational and commercial risk, and we do um, I would say we we do handle this risk very well uh, because of the size of our fleet. Uh, we're not really affected by the Red Sea uh, and the tension level in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So, so for us, you know, the main, I said, the main driver here is uh, is the U.S. LPG exports, dead exports from the Middle East, and the very healthy demand side building up in Asia. And we talk about what it is that you're you're sending along, right? With very large gas carriers is something you focus on. You focus also on ESG. Um, tell me a little bit about what's changing. Mm. in your environment yeah. as well. So um, 
we have, um, I would say, the privilege in our in our in our shipping segment to actually have technology which is uh, dual fuel LPG run engines, mm -hmm. which reduces emissions uh, right. of CO two and all the particles, and also is uh, is a great uh, cost saver on the bunker side. We save last year eleven million dollars. It's like four or five thousand dollars up to six thousand dollars a day by burning LPG instead of compliant fuel which is a great cost saver for us so so we have retrofitted 15 of our ships with this technology and have the largest fleet in the world with this dual fuel technology at the moment I like how you say it. it's a privilege I mean it also costs to get those ships up to that level right because mm -hmm. I've talked to many shipping companies and they have to pay to get their vessels up to those levels to yeah. have less emissions, to be more ESG friendly and all that. Um, I don't know how problematic that is, but it's nice when you get there and you have, I mean, what percentage of the ships are you working on to sort of move them forward to, to a, to a carbon emissions levels or things that, you know, you follow more closely? So, so we have, uh, do not have any new buildings at the moment on mm -hmm. order, uh, where you can also get the same technology right. uh, by building new ships. Yeah. And the reason for that is that we believe the, sh the ship prices are simply too expensive. Right. So, and sure. shipping is a cyclical industry, so if you time these investments on the wrong end of the cycle, you're not able to harvest and, and uh, pay out dividends as we mm -hmm. do now. So we, mm -hmm. we believe we have a good proven track record in, in investing at the right point in, in the cycle. And um, like I said, next time we're ordering new buildings, which is um, uh, th then of course we will make sure that we, we also do this with the latest technology available at the time. Yeah, and, and are we running out of resources? Do we have endless resources? Where do we stand on that? And obviously the U.S. remains very competitive, right? Um, I am curious about our yeah. footprint in the global story. Yeah, so I think the, the U.S. plays a vital role as an exporter of this hydrocarbon, which is yeah. uh, uh, very competitively priced uh, as an export product from the States mm -hmm. and is uh, able to penetrate uh, markets in Asia because of that. So, you know, the commodity LPG is a great story because it's competitively priced. It's quite easy to handle, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, readily available uh, right. in the Middle East and here in the States. And how, just quickly, I mean, when you see oil at $82 a barrel and all the other elements, the Fed uh, may cut rates, I mean, all, you know, labor costs, commodity costs, a strong U.S. dollar. Um, any of those worry you, or what's on your radar every day? Are you watching yields every day? What do you watch every day? Now, of course, we, we do watch... Um, um, not, if not every day, at least on a monthly basis, what's happening here in the U.S. on the production side. Um, I would say that what we do see that when, when big companies yeah. like the terminal uh, companies are in expanding their investments uh, here in the States, that's a good sign for us. Yeah. And you're seeing that? We're seeing that. Good. Okay, great. That's good news. Glad it is. to hear it. Yeah, Christian Sorensen, CEO of BWLPG here now, a dual listing, listed at the New York Stock Exchange today and saw their the ringing of the bell. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.